Yeah, I'm Graham McGregor. I chair Action on Sugar, and I'm professor of uh, cardiovascular medicine at the Wolfson Institute at Bath's and London Hospital and uh, Medical School. Um, we're all aware, I think, that uh, increasing obesity, both in children and adults, increasing prevalence of diabetes, which is largely due to abdominal obesity, is a major worldwide problem, a particular problem in the UK. We're one of the worst nations in the EU for obesity and type 2 diabetes. And we've now come to a stage where we've got to do something about it. Almost entirely, this obesity pandemic is due to the food industry putting out and marketing highly sugared sweet and soft drinks and foods that contain vast amounts of sugar and fat which give us no feeling of satiation and or transient feeling of satiation and therefore people eat them but they still feel hungry afterwards, they eat far more and not, not surprisingly they get obese. So what are we going to do about this? Well we've got to tackle the food industry. There's no point in saying we've got to do more exercise, which is the mantra of many of the sugar, sweet and soft drink companies or some of the food industry. If you think a Big Mac, chips and a Coca-Cola contains the calorie equivalent of 18 oranges, just think about that and then think that in order to burn that energy off, you have to have to do half a marathon. Well, anyone who argues that taking more exercise is going to help beat the obesity pandemic is talking rubbish. You can't do it. And these people who are already getting obese are unable to take this sort of exercise. We have to tackle the underlying cause, which is the food industry. And we've got to get them to produce more healthy food. Now, how are we going to do that? Now, as you're probably aware, David Cameron, because of the publicity and the huge media interest that we and other chari medical charities have generated in the last year, has now been forced into coming out with a plan, a coherent plan, to prevent obesity and type 2 diabetes. Yeah, so we've produced an evidence-based uh, plan uh, for preventing obesity, which we've given to David Cameron and his colleagues at Number 10 Downing Street, and all of these actions are based on evidence. The first one, which is by far the most effective, is to reformulate food and sweet, sugar, sweet and soft drinks. So what we're calling for is the same as Public Health England, that is a 50% reduction in the amount of sugar, both in sugar sweetened soft drinks and in all foods. Now this would cause a reduction in calorie intake of over 100 kilocalories per person per day in the UK, which in itself would be enough to prevent obesity and type 2 diabetes. But that isn't sufficient. What we need to do is to reduce fat as well, because fat contains two and a half times the calories that sugar does. And therefore, when you think about obesity, fat in hidden in foods is equally important, particularly in all the fast foods, things like Big Macs, Kentucky Fried Chicken, all those sort of very unhealthy foods which particularly are sold to children by the food industry. And we're calling for a 15% reduction in the amount of fat that's added to foods by reformulation and that would reduce calorie intake by 100 kilocalories. Now, what, what this is based on is a very successful salt reduction program where we did the same for salt. We gradually reduced the amount of salt that the foods you put into all the foods you buy in the supermarket in the restaurant. You slowly remove it without people being aware. They don't notice. And salt has been reduced in most products now by about 30 to 40% without you even noticing it. We can do the same for sugar and fat. So that's a very important way of getting calorie intake down. In other words, you'll go on eating the same foods, but these foods will have less calories in. And the more you eat these foods, the greater the effect it will have. So if you're somebody who's poorer, who tends to live on sugar-sweetened drinks and fast foods, you will have a bigger reduction in calories than someone who's already eating more healthily. Now that's one major action. The second action is price promotions. The UK is unique in having supermarkets that promote 
prices of two for one, three for two, this sort of thing. And it's been shown that around 80%, 80% are for unhealthy foods. And this encourages greater consumption of these foods that are high in salt, fat and sugar. And that needs to be banned. And you should only have price promotions on healthy foods like fruit and vegetables. The other thing that we really need to get a grip on is marketing and advertising of these foods. It's totally wrong that we ban cigarette advertising and yet we allow free reign to the big food companies to advertise unhealthy food products which are by far a bigger cause of death now through too much salt, too much calories from the sugar and fat and too much saturated fat putting our cholesterol, lack of fruit and vegetables, is causing far more deaths than tobacco. So what we're advocating is that all forms of marketing and advertising should be um, banned in children and adolescents and to be severely restricted in adults and only advertising and marketing of healthy food products should be allowed. The other thing is that we're also calling for a sugar tax, particularly on sugar sweetened drinks, and we're calling for a 20% tax on sugar sweetened drinks because we think that this would have an effect. It should be an escalating tax, just as it is for alcohol and tobacco in the UK. In other words, the Chancellor can increase the tax with time, and particularly if the food and soft drink industry don't respond to the reformulation. And this is a very important part of our policy. The other thing is that government-funded food, such as food in schools, prisons, hospitals, army, should all stick to very... Uh, strict healthy criteria and that would have a big effect on the food industry because it's a big share of the total amount of food that's produced in the UK and then we're also asking for better labelling of food clearer labelling, a uniform system throughout the UK so it would then be possible to educate you and me as to how to read a label, at the moment we have a very confusing picture with six different types of label in supermarkets currently, and we must reduce this to one simple front of pack colour coded label which can easily be recognised and would have uh, colour codings for red for high and sugar, salt, calories and fat, and amber for medium and green for okay, and they need to be tightened up, the criteria. All this will need an independent agency to run it, and it's vital that we have an independent agency like we had with the Food Standards Agency, which was independent of government and ministerial control, and based its policies not on ministerial whims, but on the science behind why we're all developing high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity and type 2 diabetes. Then we'll be able to prevent it, and then the food industry will be part of this. The UK food industry has led the world on salt reduction, and could lead the world on preventing obesity and type 2 diabetes. Thank you.